working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your St. Kitts Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of St. Kitts Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, Win FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Working for You. This is the weekly radio program where the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, the people in the diaspora, the people all around the world can interact with the government, their government, and know what is happening in St. Kitts and Nevis. Now today, I will be joined by Mr. Samuel Duggins at mm -hmm. 2 o'clock. We will be speaking about the effects of violent music on children and adolescents. However, before then, I want to recap some of the highlights of the first anniversary of the government of national unity. Of course, on February 16th, it was a watershed moment in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis when three parties, the Concerned Citizens Movement of Nevis, under the leadership of Premier Honorable Vance Amory, the People's Labour Party under the leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, and the People's Action Movement under the leadership of now Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Sean Richards, came together to form a tripartite union in taking St. Kitts and Nevis forward. Now the government just recently in its celebration of its first year anniversary had a week of activities to celebrate that one year anniversary. And the celebrations of course were well attended by the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. From the church service, two town hall meetings meet the people, one in St. Kitts and one in Nevis. An anti-crime, Sounds of Peace concert held at the circus. Then you had, of course, one-on-one -on -one consultations in constituencies. You had the constituency day, which was on Sunday, this past Sunday, and you also had you also had uh, working for you last Wednesday when the Honorable Sean Richards was here and he gave the philosophy and the vision basically of the Team Unity administration. Today I want to highlight some of the things that were accomplished in one year by the Team Unity Government or the Government of National Unity and its report card where the government of course boasts so many things that were accomplished in one year. Some of them of course I will outline to you now. In its first year the government removed VAT from the cost of food, medicine, and, medicine no on funeral, and funeral expenses. expenses, thereby making it easier for people. People can have more disposable income in their pockets. The government paid out $16 million in due gratuities to former sugar workers. The government discontinued the shift system at the Bastia High School, 
and the construction of a temporary campus at the school at Taylor's in Bastyr. And there are plans to construct a brand new Bastyr High School. The government surpassed its 2015 tax revenue targets by the end of November 2015 and recorded the best ever VAT day revenue in the history of the country. The government has set out to restore democracy to St. Kitts and Nevis after the travesty meted out on St. Kitts and Nevis and its people and what can be considered that infamous day on January 16th, 2015. There has been return of order and decorum to the federal parliament and the meeting of constitutional obligation in the appointment of a deputy speaker. There also has been the recalibration and resuscitation of the Citizenship by Investment program that was on the verge of collapse. There has been improvement in diplomatic relations between St. Kitts and Nevis and the governments of Canada and the USA. There has been new diplomatic relations with Ukraine and other strategic alliances pending with a number of new states. Presently, there are ongoing repairs and renovation to the Mary Child's Hospital in Molyneux. And the construction of the Mental Health Day Treatment Center at Lime Keen in St. Kitts. There has been the retooling and revamping of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. There is improved workplace monitoring to eliminate illegal and unfair labor market practices. There is a commitment from Petro Caribe or PDV, improved housing and urban zoning in East Bastyr and Connery. Expanded fiscal incentive program for SMEs and entrepreneurs, SMEs, small and medium sized enterprises. There's a finalized construction agreement with respect to the new fisheries complex for Nevis. Overall, there's improvement in the investment climate and investor confidence in St. Kitts and Nevis. Geothermal exploration has begun on St. Kitts. And there was new legislation for renewable energy passed in the House of Assembly. There have been the substantial completion of the upgrade of the Dr. Sir Kennedy Simmons Highway. And if you would notice out on the Southeast Peninsula, the road there is paved. Upgrading of the vehicle fleet of the Water Services Department. There are initial designs for the East Line Bus Terminal. There has been relief to livestock farms by reducing the cost of animal feed from $45 per bag to $35 per bag, cutting the price of fertilizer from $140 per bag to $75 per bag, reducing the average cost of seeds by 50%, discounting the cost of fencing wire from $600 per roll to $400 per roll and fencing poles from $23 to $12, a significant reduction. Pep farms have been established in Kayon and Phillips Village. 
They sourced funding and, and completed 84 housing units which are now available for distribution. The establishment of special assistance program for homeowners without water, restrooms, or proper roofing protection. 31 persons have already received grant funding of up to $10,000 each. There's ascension to international fishing agreements with respect to UN fish stock and port state measures. Diplomatic relations have been established with Ukraine, Saudi Arabia, Senegal, and Rwanda. And visa waiver agreements completed with Brazil and Chile. There has been the facilitation of code sharing arrangements between JetBlue Airlines and Seaborne Airways. And the facilitation of membership in the International Organization on Migration. There has been the launch of United Airlines' weekly flights between St. Kitts and Newark, New Jersey. A Criminal Justice Strategic Board has been established. There has been the appointment of an additional prosecutor to handle court backlog inherited from the previous administration. The government also recently launched the innovative and groundbreaking e-government platform, which was a public-private partnership to facilitate execution of the government's business, improve investors' access to business and trade information on our jurisdiction, and expedite citizens' and residents' access to essential services and products, such as taxation, civil registry, etc. The government has also established the National ICT Governance Board and has supplied $25 million in budgetary support to the Nevis Island Administration. In one year, with the government of national unity in place, there has been an increase in the number of small businesses. There has been significant high growth rate of 5%, job creation, and increase in the number of self-employed persons registered with Social Security. During one year, Dr. Sir Kennedy Simmons was declared as a national hero. The People's Employment Program continues to be upgraded and reformed. SAIC is hosted the CPL Games and the Carifta Games during the one year anniversary of the Team Unity Administration. The renaming of National Athletic Stadium in honor of Kim Collins and the first ever distribution of scholarships from the St. Kitts and Nevis National Education Foundation. There has also been the appointment of a Director of Culture after the post was vacated for approximately three years. There has been heightened interface between government and the various religious organizations in the nation. Modalities of a collaborative framework being finalized with respect 
to joint response to social challenges. There has been the reintroduction of fresher courses for all certified taxi drivers following a hiatus since 20, 2009. 62 drivers were trained to date. There has been a total of 71 individuals trained to become taxi operators. The last of such training was in 2009. A new police high command has also been put in place with the commissioner of police named as Mr. Ian Queeley and the deputy commissioner of police from Navis, Mr. Hilroy Brandy. You also have Mr. Terence James. You also have Mr. Andre Mitchell. And you also have Miss Merslin Hughes. They form the high command. There has also been a new superintendent of prisons in the person of Junie Scrape Hodge. Now that is quite an accomplishment in one year. Later on in the program, we will be joined by Samuel Doggins and we are going to be talking about the effects of violent music on children and adolescents, especially coming out of the Sounds of Peace anti-crime concert that was held at the circus. We are joined in studio by Mr. Samuel Duggins, who most persons know, and he's a young entrepreneur, and he has been an integral part of in the entertainment industry. Most of you would know him from um, Island Expressions. And he was an integral part in the organization of the Sounds of Peace anti-crime concert that was held as part of the Government of National Unity's one year um, anniversary celebrations. This took place at the circus last Friday. And he's joining me because we are going to talk a little bit about the effects of music on children and adolescents. And of course, you know, part of the government of national unities and um, trust is to work along with young people and to see how young people, of course, can be positive and to lead productive lives. And so we are going to have a discussion surrounding that. Now, Beethoven, famous Beethoven, the musician, once said that Music can change the world. And we can see that music's importance to youth, how it can be measured in the amount of time that young people spend listening to music. Now I want to ask Mr. Duggins to give us a little bit in terms of what was he thinking um, when this thing was organized because it seemed to me it was it was put on in the context of what was taking place in St. Kitts and Nevis a stop the violence sort of campaign and so on and why link this stop the violence campaign to music? Well good afternoon Les Roy mm -hmm. uh, it's a pleasure being here and working for you for the first time you're um, most welcome. I've been seeing you and hearing you all over the airwaves <laughs> and I'm finally here um, well, to get into the conversation of why such a concert at such a time, I will have to venture back a little bit further. Um, as a matter of fact, while I'm venturing back, maybe I should start from the beginning and get to where we are. Now, the truth is, as an individual, I've always been in love with the performing and creative arts. I think it may have stemmed from um, having a father who was an artist himself. You know, my father, um, along with a few of the other guys in Matt Knight, I am told, would have been very instrumental with introducing reggae to the island. Um, so back when it was mainly Calypso and 
you know, that and, and soul, um, they were the movers and shakers that brought a new genre of music um, for people to listen to on the island. Now, ironically, back in the late 90s, I started introducing hip hop mm -hmm. to the island. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at that time, reggae was already established and I was um, more or less pegged as a um, an innovator for bringing an art form that most people were, weren't very familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, but all of that really is just my love for, for music and love for the art. And not just Fabra Pure, pure, I love music, but as a, a young man growing up in the village, I've been exposed to a number of things. And part of that would be the lack of um, an out, the, 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 just not having that outlet as a young man. And I think um, there were a number of young men and women growing up around my time that wanted to share what they had in their minds, what was in their hearts, <laughs> with the world, but there was just no positive outlet for such. And music provided that for myself, and by extension a few others as well. So we were able to use that creative energy to tell stories about what happened around us. And we then translated that into song and went on stages and performed in front of thousands. Mm -hmm. And there's no better feeling as a young man knowing that you have thousands of people that are listening to what you have to say. You feel very empowered. And as such, going through that, and the kind of man that I am, I thought, hey, you know, I've been able to touch thousands of people. I have fans all around the, the, the country. And then through UNESCO, I also had a chance to travel to the Seychelles mm -hmm. and the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And they adopted one of my songs as their global theme song. Mm -hmm. So having that, I was able to have fans all around the world. You know, I mean, when I search stuff on the internet and I see like cleanup campaigns in the Cook Islands, which I've never been, being inspired by words that I have written here in St. Kitts, you start to see the, the, the immense power mm -hmm. and potential that the arts and entertainment yes. will have. So I said, why not open the door for others? And not just do it for yourself. Because here now, all those guys that were around you with all those great ideas, now we would have an outlet to, to, to share their, their ideas. And then I started doing something called Homegrown Talent Outburst. Mm -hmm. And all it was, it was a similar thing on a smaller scale where we started doing local talent shows, yes. all local acts. <coughs> now, I did that for about three years. And the last one that I did, we had about 600 persons show up, all local mm -hmm. acts. Matter of fact, the only overseas act I had was Ibis out of Antigua because he was a friend of mine. And it was my birthday celebration, so he flew in to mm -hmm. celebrate with me. Um, and that was the only act from overseas I had. Um, he came to DJ. From, the, from then on, I started getting a bit depressed with the direction of hip-hop music mm -hmm. and music in general, more so with the lyrical content. To me, the lyrical content started going downhill and music became, as they would say hip-hop, music went south mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it, it became more about the beat right. and persons would, would, would barely say anything constructive over right. the beat. So then, my, my thinking was, hey, we need to do something to correct this. And what I came up with was to remove the beat mm. from the music. So that way, the only thing you could pay attention to was, would be the words, right? 